Hello, I'm Sean Kenny, and today I'm having a look at Kerbal Space Program. In particular, I'm having a look at the Cathane mod. Uh, this adds a resource to the game, uh, Cathane, which you're able to mine and then convert into fuel to fuel your spacecraft. So you can have sort of multi-stage journeys out into the solar system and uh, setting up refuel points or minor rovers. Uh, so apparently it's been a big update, um, so I wanted to have a look at it, see what's new. Um, I'm going to do a sort of more in-depth series of Kerbal Space Program. Uh, there's, they're going, um, Squad has basically announced that they're working on the latest update, which is in quality assurance testing at the moment. And uh, that's going to be including a lot of the career mode stuff. So I, I'm going to start a, a video series when, when that launches. And we'll go through a, a career mode in Kerbal Space Program, at which point be able to touch on sort of basic rocket design, more advanced rocket design. Uh, in the meantime, Scott Manley's uh, YouTube channel is fantastic. He's really the, the master of Kerbal Space Program. Um, but I just thought I'd have a little peek at the Cathane mod, uh, the new updates that they've added. So I'm going to start off with um, what I want to do is send a rover to the moon or the MUN and um, have it be able to mine Cathane, convert it into fuel, and then maybe have other ships run with it and maybe land down get fueled up so that they can go on further uh, so the first stage of this plan is I'm just going to make a, a little satellite to go and start mapping the planet um, so the at the top it's a uh, pretty basic it's just a little probe it's got one of the cathane sensors um, this is the, the smaller one so we're gonna have to be fairly low altitude but that's kind of what I want to do I want to have a, a circumpolar um, orbit and uh, that way it'll be able to scan the entire planet and we'll have it fairly glow close to the surface so it goes pretty quickly. Uh, we have a couple solar panels, a battery, uh, an SAS module, advanced SAS module to help keep stability and uh, a little small uh, tank of fuel with um, a small engine to get it into place. Uh, the rest uh, I'm hoping that this should be able to get us to the mu the MUN, I'm hoping. Um, so, uh, I just want to make sure, yeah, we have all our staging, everything's ready to go. Uh, so let's try launching it. And uh, here we go. Alright, so I've already launched one around Kerbin um, to actually map out the planet just to to test make sure I've installed the mod and everything correctly. Uh, so we'll be sending this one to the MUN. So I'm going to be starting off pressing T. That's going to lock on our SAS, which is basically a gyroscopic stabilizer. Uh, and then using the left shift uh, use to control the throttle and uh, left control to throttle down. Uh, we're just going to start right at the maximum. And uh, by pressing spacebar, that's going to launch us and, and go through each of our staging. So we're going to start that off and let's rock it to the moon. So I have these set up as an, an asparagus setup. So these two tanks are going to drain first. I hit the space bar. Those are going to release, and then it'll uh, all the engines will be draining off these two other side tanks. Uh, at which point, when they're out of fuel, I can hit space bar again. They'll um, they'll separate, and then should have a, an entire. Both these tanks will be full of fuel, and we'll have uh, quite a bit of room to maneuver. So. I'm waiting until we hit around 10 kilometers uh, up in the sky, and that's when I'm going to start moving over. Now, this is the artificial horizon, so by going right or pressing the D key, um, once we hit around 10 kilometers, that's going to start. Nope, oh, got to separate those engines. Uh, that'll start our um, base, our gravity turn uh, to get us into orbit. So we're starting to come up onto that now. Now, while the SAS is locked, I won't be able to turn. So I'm going to have to press T to turn that off. And then I'm going to start nosing over, try and get us set. Then hold us on the 90 degree mark. It's going to give us our, our resources, our charge. So there we go. Now we're at about a 45 degree angle. 
I'm going to press T to lock it in place, and the gyroscope, the SAS there, is going to try and hold it into place. And I can just do some fine adjustments. Now, by pressing M, we're going to get a uh, the map view. Now, as you can see, if you're familiar with Kerbal Space Program, we now have sort of a hex grid over the planet. Uh, that is the cathane sensor. So we can turn that off up in this uh, little t tool here, which you can also move around the screen. And but right now I'm looking at the uh, orbit here, so I want this to get up at least over 70. And that's almost there now. Alright, so I'm going to kill our engines, pressing X. So now we're we're pretty much in in uh, straight parabolic arc, right? Uh, we still have some fuel left in those side tanks, but we're almost down. Uh, so I'm going to keep trying to edge over by holding down right to uh, edges towards the horizon. Uh, this artificial horizon, basically the brown, is giving you an indication of w what direction down is. Um, and the the blue is giving you the indication of what's up is and that's in relation to whatever gravity body you're you happen to be nearby or whatever gravity well you're you're in so i'm going to try and have that right on the horizon so what i want to do is when our arc hits that ap which is for ap uh, apoapsis um, that's going to be our highest point and that's when we want to start to kick in the engines to give us some lateral momentum so we can start going around the planet and uh, find ourselves in a stable orbit. And I'm trying to uh, move us on. So that's about 30 seconds away. Oh, that's why it's not moving. I had it locked on the SAS. <laughs> Always difficult to fight against that. not right in the nick of time. I'm going to start burning now. I'm going to check back the map because we're going to have to lose these side tanks very shortly. There we go. Press spacebar and they're gone. Alright, so now we can try and circular... circular... Yeah, can't say it. Basically, uh, extend our orbit out so that we, we're actually in an orbit. Otherwise, we're going to eventually start we're starting to head down now what we want to do is get us moving so quickly enough so that we'll be the planet won't be there where when we hit <laughs> if that makes any sense not really but um, giving us this momentum basically we're, we're extending our our orbit out wider and wider uh, now the atmosphere starts at 70, so I'm I'm getting a little concerned that we're getting a little lower than I'd like. That will end up providing us with some air resistance that we're going to have to fight. Although, thankfully, at this high up, there's there's not that much, but looks like we have enough to uh, get us into orbit here. Although we might have extended out a bit. So we're going to be dipping down. So our lowest point, the um, PE, which is uh, the periapsis, um, that's going to be our, our lowest point in this elliptical orbit. Uh, that's telling me it's at 62 kilometers up. So we're going to be sort of dipping in the very highest uh, upper edge of the atmosphere. But and that will slow us down just a little bit. So if I hold the mouse over there, you can see it is slowly going down, but uh, that is quite a bit higher. That's 217 kilometers up. So um, even if we do sort of lose a little bit of um, our orbit on that end, uh, it shouldn't be enough to, to make it. So we're, we're, uh, it'll be stable for the, basically the, this orbit, maybe a couple more, um, but I'm going to want to fix that once we get on the other side. We'll be able to sort of skim through in this particular case. Um, now, while we're in an atmosphere, we can only accelerate up to four times. Um, this does allow you control 
but it's um oh, I do did not want to do that <laughs> but we'll be okay um and that, that that's part of the reason if you're accelerating then everything's happening so much quicker it's really difficult to try and uh it's really difficult to try and anticipate. Now I gotta watch because I'm using just a remote probe, so there's actually no curb and kerbals in this uh, ship, so it can run out of power. It's currently just on batteries, uh, but we also are over on the night side of the planet, so I can extend the solar panels. Uh, not that it'll do m us much good until we're out um, until we actually hit some sunlight, which will be a little while. So I'm just going to keep accelerating up until we're out of the 70. And so once we're out of the atmosphere, then we get more options for the time acceleration, um, which will go a lot faster. Just gonna wait until we're around to the apoapsis point. This is probably not, uh, definitely not the most efficient way to get to the Mun, but it will get us there, I believe. Now, I always like uh, avoiding doing a lot of thrusts with the solar panels out, uh, as I've sometimes had them break off just from the change of momentum but I'll keep them out until we're uh, about ready to do our our thrust. I'm going to basically just want to add a little bit more height to the periapsis so that it will have a, a completely stable orbit. Now, that mark, that means that if I were to fire in that direction, that would be in the... Uh, I'd be thrusting in the direction of our travel, which would slow, which would reduce the periapsis, and it would bring it into the planet, so we'd, that would end up descending us into the atmosphere of the planet. And then this mark, this sort of yellowish uh, circle, that means that I'd be facing in the direction of our movement, and if I accelerate that, at this point it's basically going to extend the opposite end of the elliptical orbit. So... I want to sort of lock on to that. It's, uh, you have a lot less control when you're using remote probes. They don't have the uh, gyroscopic mass, I guess, that even just a, a basic cockpit that includes one Kerbal has on it. Uh, that's why I like adding an SAS module to it. Maybe it's not entirely necessary, but it does. I find it does help a fair bit. And, Trying to uh, trying to control it, so I'm just going to lock it on there, and I'm going to time accelerate just a little bit uh, until we're a little bit closer, because that's you know two minutes away. Who wants to wait two minutes doing nothing, sort of staring out into space? So I, I already had, like I say, I have one in a polar orbit around Kerbin, and so that's over time that's going to be able to map the entire surface. So there we go. Now, I've moved off it a little bit. I'm going to add just a little bit of thrust that's going to sort of start extending that out, but it's also going to give me a little bit better control. So I can just lock it on. And I don't really need that to get very high. I'll bring that up to about 100 or so. Yeah, so that's more than enough for a stable orbit. All right, so our target is the MUN. So I'm going to set that as a target, just going to left click on it, set it as a target. Now what I need to do is figure out sort of what my burn is that's going to get me there. Uh, so anywhere along the orbit I can left click on it and add a maneuver. Uh, there's a few things, these are going to change different directions about the the uh, my orbit. Um, but basically all what I want to do is just add some acceleration and that would be extending out my orbit to that of the months. Now, obviously that's not intercepting with the the MUN at any point. That's okay. It just gave me a rough idea of that. That's about how much thrust I'm going to need to sort of get out to that orbit. If I click on the center and hold left and hold, I can then sort of rotate it around my current orbit. And there. So that that's 
actually showing us getting a, a bit of a uh, an encounter. Now I can sort of play around and maybe say, oh, do I need quite as much? No, I can. So that's sort of about the m least amount I need. Maybe just a seems to be a bit yeah about the the least amount of thrust I need to actually get to the the mun and that is actually going to be happening in two minutes so we better uh, get on target so now if we look at the artificial horizon here we do have this blue target and that's our maneuver node uh, what we want to do is lock on to that and it's also giving us a, a few other pieces of information. I'm just going to lock on to this target. Now it's telling us we're going to need a change in velocity, which is called a delta V, of 836.8 meters per second. So we need to change our velocity by that much. That's why they call it delta V. Um, and this is the change in. And uh, Based on our engines, it figures it's going to be a 39 second burn, and we're coming up to it in 1 minute and 48 seconds. Now, I don't want to wait until that the node is sort of T minus 0 and then start burning, because if that takes 40 seconds of burn, then essentially all that burn is going to be after the actual node. What I want to do is, in order to sort of center the amount of thrust that I get on that node so it will most closely resemble my anticipated path. Uh, what I want to do is spread that burn out so that it's even on both sides at the time. So basically with that, it, long and the short is I have about 40 seconds. I'm going to start burning when this is about T minus 20 seconds and that will end up meaning that I'll end my burn at about t plus 20 seconds, give or take a, a second or two here or there. And so that should mean that my the my anticipated orbit will be more or less um, what I want it to be. So I'm going to start retracting these panels. Now it's not absolutely necessary, but I, I've had a few times where I've broken off solar panels, so I just don't risk it anymore. Um, so I'm going to press T, unlock, I'm just going to do a final adjustment here. We got 30 seconds, and now it's 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So I'm going to accelerate to full, and I'm going to hope that we got enough thrust to, to get us there and maybe do the descending. I have a little bit of thrust in the satellite itself, which should be uh, more than enough to get it into the actual orbit that I want. And um, so as you can see, it, as I'm burning, it's it's th giving me this, this bar is, is sort of saying this is how much thrust I've already applied, this is how much I left, have left to go, and so it's getting down to zero. So I'm going to press X to kill it, kill my engines, and have a look at the results. So we're not quite there. There, and I'm just, just, that was all it was, just a little touch. So that, uh, we are now going to encounter the mud. So I'm going to kill that there. And so here's our current orbit. Uh, if we do nothing, we're going to get within the gravity well of the mud here and we'll sort of zip along and then we'll leave the gravity well around here and then this is what our anticipated orbit would end up being. What we want to do is I'm going to time accelerate till we're about there and uh, once we enter the gravity well then I want to try and do a, a deceleration thrust so that we actually enter the orbit of the Mun there. Well, what I'm going to do though is I'm going to extend those solar panels now because it's uh, we're going to accelerate time I don't want to run out of uh, battery power on our ship while we're doing that. So you got to be careful because it's going to be really easy to accelerate too quickly and then really overshoot what you need to do and then you, know, you can end up being getting into a bit of trouble there. So I'm going to stop it right around here. All right, so. It's going to be 49 minutes of real time before we actually hit that periapsis. But what I can do is to give me a bit of a target. I can add a maneuver. 
and I just that's slowing down. Oops, watch too much. So I just sort of want to get. I want to save as much fuel as possible. I just want the very least amount of what I need to actually slow down and get into an orbit. So about 300 meters per second. So that's not going to be sort of my final orbit. I'm going to be doing some fine tuning, but I want to. Uh, have a target to uh, to aim for. So now I gotta try and find that blue target on this artificial horizon. All I'm gonna do is basically start spinning. So obviously it's not within this hemisphere of what I'm looking at. Yeah, this has been like an absolutely fantastic. If you're at all interested in space, um, I can't recommend the Kerbal Space Program highly enough. I've been uh, get real addicted to this every few weeks <laughs> or months, and they add an update, and and then it's uh, disappear into this game for a couple weeks. Um, and now they are planning on adding resources in the final product. Uh, they're sort of continuing to work at it. They said that right now uh, they've been working on the career mode so that'll be interesting. Um, now the Cathane mod is sort of a nice placeholder. Um, I'll be adding a link to the Cathane site um, down in the description of the video. And um, basically gives us something to sort of play around with, a bit of a, a resource that we can go out there and explore with. Um, until they sort of finalize what's actually going to be going in in the game as far as resource collection go. But uh, that always just seems the, the most fun to me. It's like I want to send like a probe out to Jewel that can maybe gather up a resource that can fuel its engines and then, you know, have it basically an automated probe that could go and scan all the, the planets or something, do some kind of science. Um, so this gives us a bit of a taste. So okay, I gotta. Uh, we're locked on to the uh, target. It's all ready to go. So basically, I'm just gonna accelerate time a little bit. Oh, so you gotta be careful there. You just get too a little too quick, and you can find yourself being flung out of the uh, gravity well, never to return. There we go. Okay, so we're about 50 seconds. So it can be sort of precise. I'm kind of just using this as a, a bit of a guide to give me an idea of, of how much thrust I'm going to need and how long of a burn it's going to require. Um, so, you know, a bit off, but it at this point, for me, it really doesn't matter. Uh, what I want to do now, though, is I want to figure out the best orbit. Now, for a satellite of this nature, uh, I like a s circumpolar orbit. Uh, so, what I'll want to do is going to add a maneuver here, and I'm going to try rotating. Yeah, and uh, which is going to be the most probably this way. We're in a fairly planar orbit, but we want to basically flip that right on its end. So, uh, that would get me not quite what I want, but it is sort of in the direction. Now all I have to do is sort of decelerate some. Uh, okay, that's not going to work. Alright, so the nice thing about these maneuver nodes is if you're messing them up, you can always just delete it and try it again. So, I think what's going to require is sort of a bit of finagling as we go. I want to shorten the orbit, but I also want to start spinning it, and then shortening it. It's starting to look pretty good. vertical. Now the other thing that I want to do is I want to try and position 
uh, this orbit so that it's along the terminator of the uh, planet. Uh, what that means is that the terminator is basically that the position along the planet here where s light m and dark meet, where the, the sun shining on basically the globe of the, the planet or moon, um, it terminates and it's the, the, the point where they're uh, no longer bathed in light. What that's going to do is it should basically mean that the satellite will perpetually be within view of the sun, uh, thereby being solar powered. It's you know it's always going to have a source of power. Um, and since we're doing a circular uh, circumpolar orbit, it really doesn't matter um, for the most part wh where it is. It, but positioning it along that way means it's it's not going to spend a, basically half its orbit in darkness where it's running off battery power and it and it r runs the risk of running out of power entirely it'll stop scanning and there'll be gaps and this it'll take much longer to try and scan the planet now so this is saying we're going to need about 200 meters per second for for this adjustment now this is still not quite in the final configuration that we want but we're definitely getting closer so we can start zeroing in on that um, it's hard to say whether that's exactly on the terminator, but I, you know, it's, I'd say it's probably pretty close. We can try dragging it. Uh, of course, that ends up. Well, that's still more or less vertical. So we'll just continue that a little bit. Uh, I think that's too much, maybe. can be difficult and it's gonna it, that's a difficult and uh, that looks pretty good I think I'm gonna go with that all right so now we have that's in 12 hours so <laughs> we have plenty of time to get into position uh, so I'm just gonna start rotating again trying to find the uh, the blue target now we're almost out of fuel on this sort of main boost stage, but I have uh, this with a small little engine, so I, I, I think we have more than enough fuel to, to get us in position. So the other concern I might try and do is try and get rid of the space debris, right? Because I'm going to be separating that off. So depending on how much thrust we have, what I might do is um, shorten the orbit just enough so that it intersects with the, the MUN, um, separate off the, the last piece of the, the booster so that it'll impact the MUN and then I should have a, enough thrust in that to uh, recircularize the orbit. And uh, I want to lock on to the target here. But the momentum's a little much. <laughs> uh, tapping T can often help. It sort of turns it on, turns it off, turns so the gyroscope is trying to help you, but wow. Definitely overshot there. Come on. Just gotta ease it back into place. Like I say, well, at least I got 12 hours to do it. Uh, hopefully that. Uh, definitely won't be taking that long, though. <laughs> uh, this is where time acceleration is pretty handy. When you're going to other planets, uh, it, it could take years. Here we go. Alright, so now we can accelerate time a little bit so that we're almost within position. So you can see the the other satellite I have that busily scanning away for deposits of cathode on carbon. Uh, the, the reason I like the circumpolar orbit is because it's basically going to get every part of the planet. If you have 
orbits around the equator, all you're ever going to do is get a few degrees up now, whatever the path of the orbit is. You're never going to get sort of the poles. Uh, this way, as the planet is rotating underneath your scans, you're going to be able to get every every inch of the planet. So what do we have? We're still about 44 minutes away, so we can accelerate this up a bit. figure a seven second burn so it's going to be pretty pretty close it's still going to be a bit of a rough burn I'm just going to be trying to get as close as possible but super exact is not absolutely necessary in this case although I'm going to try and be close uh, well that's definitely working and there we go. So like I said, close enough because we're going to be doing some finalizing it. And still have a lot of thrust left in that rocket. So all in all, things are looking good. So the next burn I'm going to to we're going to decelerate it. Uh, because I want to be fairly close because that'll be a much faster scan uh, in a lower orbit. Uh, so let's move that down to yeah there's no atmosphere of course on the moon so we don't have the necessarily the same restrictions but I don't necessarily need it too close maybe 50 let's say let's try 50 that's that's pretty close okay so we have a new blue target to aim for slowly edge your way towards it and there we go I'm just going to lock in on it again here and we're going to accelerate some more time That just comes equipped in all standard starships. <laughs> uh, so th thankfully you don't have to worry about oxygen and food and life support systems for your Kerbals. Um, that may, may be coming, I'm guessing, some aspect of it. There are definitely mods that you can, uh, you can get that do simulate that. Uh, definitely adds a, a new level of challenge to the game. Um, so here we go, we're uh, it's about five seconds and we're about a minute away. Accelerate even just a little bit here. Oh, there we go. All right. So we're getting very close to the final orbit, and I'm going to want to do one more. I'm going to uh... at this point, though, all I'm going to do is flip myself around because I want to do a, one more deceleration burn uh, at this per periapsis to try and bring it down to say, but we're at about 43 kilometers. I want it to be about the same as well. Um, actually what I'll do is I'll at this point I'll shorten it to the point where the uh, this point on uh, the apoapsis will turn into the new periapsis but I'm going to make that collide with the MUN uh, and then at that point I'll detach the uh, the last booster stage on the rocket and that's in the hopes that it's going to collide with the MUN and be destroyed so I don't have space debris floating around. Um, it can definitely get a little annoying having a lot of that. Uh, you're ultimately going to have a fair amount of space debris <laughs> as parts fly off ships and certain booster stages. So here once again I've 
vastly overshot our target. And take about 90 degrees of overturn <laughs> before we can start edging our way back. Yeah, definitely a lot easier when you do have an actual capsule of uh, Kerbals in it. it Unless you have an extremely heavy rocket, uh, it definitely turns a lot better than these probes. But we want to send these unmanned reconnaissance because they're going to sort of be they're going to be a permanent fixture there, scanning the the planet for resources that will be able to turn into fuel and uh, maybe power a, a moon base or further explorations into the the depths. So right now we're, while we are facing the direction of our travel, when we come around to this side, we're going to be facing the direction uh, the opposite of our travel. Uh, so that's where I'm going to actually be doing the burn. So I'm just going to time accelerate here until we get, I say you got to be pretty careful with that. <laughs> and there we go. So I'm just going to be doing it a bit by eye and that's just going to shorten the orbit so okay so that's kind of my goal right so I want this to uh, I want this last piece to basically separate uh, what I will want to do though is turn around so that when I separate, I can then fire this engine, and then that will start bringing my orbit back up to what I want it to be. And that should also mean that this will be behind us, relatively speaking, and uh, will uh, not get in our path. Because nothing, uh, nothing spells doom like ejecting parts of your spaceship in your path of motion. <laughs> so that you then have to try and navigate it. So I'm just doing a little bit of a burn to try and stabilize it. And then we'll just drop that part off. Now we've dropped a lot of weight, so it's a lot easier to control now. Oh, there we go. So, 35 and 48. Now, I'm looking here. And we're close to that Terminator. Um, actually, I think we're pretty darn close. I'm actually going to say, I think we're we're probably good here. I could try and circularize that out a little bit. Let's have a look at the uh, the actual cathane portion of this now. We've gotten all the way here. We have our satellite up, so we're going to activate that. And you can have the tone if you want, but I'm actually going to disable that. And so, as you can see, as it starts flying over, it's going to start showing these gray as it, it found none. Uh, you can time accelerate but it doesn't um, doesn't pick them up so it starts to separate out whereas if you're in real time it does tend to pick up the side ones so uh, you can sort of play around so that seems to work pretty good maybe we're missing some but you know as you can see it's going to start eventually leaving this long enough it will scan the entire planet and this will give an in, uh, indication of where we want to land to try and start harvesting the cathane resource and converting it into fuel so I'll be doing that that next time uh, I'm going to design uh, um, I figure a, a rover uh, I want a ship manned by Kerbals um, that's going to have some rover wheels so that it, you know if I don't aim it, <laughs> we don't get it exactly in the right area, that it, it will be able to uh, drive to uh, a cath field, cathane fields if they're nearby. Hopefully that's the idea is we're going to get within the ballpark and then I can narrow it down by droving on some rover wheels. So um, 
that's what I'm going to be doing next time. Uh, this is uh, Kerbal Space Program, having a look at the Cathane mod, and this is the just the Cathane satellite to do the initial scans for us. So, so long for now. Thanks for watching.